Welcome to the series of lectures in the Traumatic Brain and Spine Injury course focused on traumatic brain injury. The videos of these lectures will be interrupted by questions to make them interactive. Dr. Lett and Sega updated these lectures in 2024 from the 2014 TBSI course. We will introduce this topic with a few definitions and classifications to provide a consistent framework for the upcoming presentations. Neurosurgeons focus on traumatic brain injury rather than head injury. There are differences between these terms, although there is some overlap in their meetings. Head injuries can range from mild to severe and encompass a wide spectrum of conditions, including concussions, contusions, intracranial hemorrhages, and skull fractures. With traumatic brain injury, we are referring to brain injuries specifically, which ranges from mild, such as concussions, to severe traumatic brain injury. We can classify traumatic brain injuries based on their mechanism of injury injury type severity and whether the injury is primary or secondary. Open injuries which involve exposure of the brain to the external environment are typically caused by penetrating trauma such as gunshot wounds or sharp objects, while closed head injuries are associated with blunt trauma, for example falls or motor vehicle crashes. Injury types include skull fractures such as linear skull fracture, which has a simple fracture line where there is no depression of the outer skull vault. Depressed skull fracture involves a portion of the skull bone pushed inward. Basal skull fractures are fractures at the base of the skull. Open compound skull fractures are those skull fractures where we get a wound communicating with the skull fracture intracranial hematomas included subdural hematoma where blood collects between the dura and arachnoid mater epidural hematoma where blood accumulates between the skull and the dura mater intracerebral hemorrhages where blood pools within the brain tissue itself with a size of more than one centimeters contusions bruise areas of the brain tissue resulting from the impact of the injury intraventricular hemorrhages are bleedings in the ventricular system of the brain while subarachnoid hemorrhages are bleedings in the subarachnoid space of the brain. Diffuse axonal injury is due to rotational forces that cause shearing and tearing of axons throughout the brain. Acute injuries require immediate attention and intervention. Chronic head injury, in particular chronic subdural hematomas present with delayed onset symptoms following a prior head injury, which may have been unrecognized. Blunt injury results from falls, motor vehicle crashes, assaults, or sports-related impact, while penetrating injury results from gunshot wounds, sharp objects, or similar mechanisms. We use the Glasgow Coma Scale to classify head injuries based on their severity. A GCS score of 3.8 is a severe injury, which is associated with a profound loss of consciousness and the high likelihood of mortality or severe physical and cognitive impairments. Primary head injury includes the initial insult, like contusions, skull fractures, and intracranial bleeding. Meanwhile, secondary brain injury involves swelling, increased intracranial pressure, and inflammation. Managing secondary injury is critical to prevent further damage after the initial trauma. This classification of primary and secondary TBI helps with the understanding of the primary and secondary consequences of head injury, thus guiding diagnosis, treatment, and management strategies. TBI classifications provide different perspectives based on the causes and nature of the injury. You need to know each of these six classifications. 